What is up, Betsperts community? My name is Addison Hayes, and I'm a Dynasty Fantasy Football Analyst on Dynasty League Football's YouTube channel. Now the DLF is part of the Betsperts umbrella, I was asked to make a video on some of my favorite NFL draft prop bets since rookies have essentially been my entire focus for the last couple months. Let me first preface by saying that I'm just a normal guy who plays Dynasty. I analyze things a little bit more than the average person, but I am no means a betting expert. I actually don't even live in a state where betting is even legal but I do feel like I have my ears tuned into the NFL draft world and what we could possibly see on day one and beyond. And my final note on this is that all of the lines that I mentioned in this video are what I see currently on DraftKings Sportsbook, so they might be a little bit different than what you have on your preferred sportsbook. So let's move into my first series of prop bets for the NFL draft, which will be centered around the most important position in all of sports, the quarterback position. We know that this quarterback class is not great. In fact, none of them would probably even have been top five quarterbacks for me in last year's class. But we also know that there are a number of NFL teams who need a quarterback. And with the rising prices of quarterback contracts that we've seen just this year, having an elite quarterback on a rookie contract opens up so many possibilities for a Super Bowl run. So teams are probably still gonna be willing to reach for their guy even in a bad class. Currently, DraftKings has the total number of quarterbacks drafted in round one set at two and a half, which I think is a smash over, but so does DraftKings with a minus 250 line on that bet. I would be willing to play that despite a low return, and I would actually be even willing to play that at three and a half as well, because I do believe there's a real chance that we see at least four quarterbacks taken in round one. We're very confident that Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett are locked in first rounders. Desmond Ritter actually surprisingly has gotten a lot of hype as a first rounder as well, with recent reports from Pro Football Network's Tony Pauline saying just about every team that he's spoken to actually has a first round grade on Ritter. So that leaves either Matt Corral or Sam Howell to bring us to four quarterbacks taken in the first round. And with the number of teams that need a quarterback like the Detroit Lions, Carolina Panthers, Atlanta Falcons, Seattle, Washington, Pittsburgh, maybe even Houston, and even reports that Tennessee has been rumored to be looking for a potential Ryan Tannehill replacement, I think there's a way better possibility that we see four quarterbacks taken in round one than most people think. Sticking with the quarterback position, I have a trifecta of bets on Kenny Pickett specifically that could all hit if things go according to plan, which is gonna be Kenny Pickett to go top 10 at plus 125, Kenny Pickett to be the first quarterback taken at plus 130, and Kenny Pickett to the Carolina Panthers at plus 150. It's no secret that the Carolina Panthers have been looking for a quarterback, and after the failed experience on Sam Darnold last year, it's time that they address the position in the draft. While they could go the route of Malik Willis, it's actually been more commonly mocked that Kenny Pickett is the Carolina Panthers pick at six overall. I also think they would take Pickett over Willis if both of them were on the board at the same time since Kenny Pickett was actually committed to Temple with Matt Rule before he switched to Pitt. Pickett is more pro ready and Matt Rule and company need to start winning in order to save their jobs in Carolina. So that's why I also included Pickett as the first quarterback taken off the board. And I know that betting on all three of these is essentially just like one big bet that the draft goes a certain way to start things off. But I do think that it's very realistic, but at the end of the day, it's just up to you. And you can pick and choose which of those three that you actually prefer if you don't wanna play on all three. And then finally, as mentioned before, Desmond Ritter has entered the conversation recently as the third quarterback viewed to go as a lock in the first round draft. And if that's true, then we should be smashing minus 120 on Desmond Ritter being a first round pick. Let's move over to the wide receiver position because there are a couple of bets that I really like here. While I have been mostly staying away from first receiver taken off the board because I honestly don't really know because Garrett Wilson and Drake London, I've heard way too much about both of them. If you wanted to take a shot on this though, I would actually point you towards Jamison Williams at plus 300 as it's been reported that teams are still infatuated with his speed and if it wasn't for his ACL injury at the end of the NCAA season, he would almost certainly be a lock for first off the board in the NFL draft. You could also double down on this by hitting him as a top 10 pick at plus 200, which if you were actually a 4 for 4 subscriber in their Discord, they got this line at plus 900, which brings me to a small advertisement read that you can actually get a full year of premium access to Dynasty League Football, 4 for 4, Betsperts, and Fantasy Life with the new Betsperts bundle for only $99.99, which is absolutely insane. This is a $209 value, so over a 50% discount 
on the individual subscriptions. And this honestly is the best fantasy football bundle out there with access to the best dynasty content online, the best redraft content online, and the best betting content online. I mean, come on. What more could you possibly need? Sign up today by using the link down in the description below and get yourself some winning fantasy football advice. All right, back to wide receiver prop bets. And like a quarterback, the over-under for wide receivers is a great line to me at five and a half on the over-under, but with a line of minus 230 on the over. And while I definitely think that hits, you could just hit that for a small return and not really have to worry, but I've been more contemplating on should I play that at six and a half on the over-under? Because with the number of teams that need a wide receiver, as well as the inflated prices for elite guys that we've seen this year, it's going to be imperative for teams to get studs on rookie deals like we see with Jamar Chase, like we see with Justin Jefferson. At this point, it's basically a lot that Green Bay and Kansas City are each taking at least one guy after trading their elite receivers. The Jets, I think, are next after missing out on Tyree Kill and being rumored to have been in on trading for DK Metcalf. The Saints also need one, and I still wouldn't be shocked if the Eagles take another first-round receiver with two picks in the teens. You also have the Giants, the Falcons, the Commanders, the Texans, Chargers, Patriots, Cardinals, Cowboys, Bills, Titans. Detroit could even end the night by drafting a receiver at 32 overall. Like I literally just named you about half of the league that could take a receiver, and this class for sure has the receivers in order to hit the over on the six and a half not just the five and a half. Like I basically just talked myself into playing this line at six and a half as well, because I really do think that seven receivers taken is not an unrealistic possibility, especially when you get a better line than what is currently being had at five and a half. So if we are under the assumption that at least six, if not seven receivers are taken on day one, who are those guys gonna be? Well, I mean, you got Wilson, London, Williams, Burks, Olave. That's an easy five right there, and they might all even be gone before pick 20. Next, though, I would have Jahan Dotson, whose line is currently at minus 125 to be a first-round pick, so I would hit that. There's also George Pickens, who is currently at plus 150. And while I also don't agree with it, Christian Watson has a lot of first-round hype as well and currently sitting at minus 110, but I do think that that's kind of a trap. I actually think it would be smarter to throw a dart on Sky Moore at plus 140 than Christian Watson at minus 110. Lastly, I just wanna to touch on the running back position and the over under on first round running backs this year is at 0 0.5 with the over actually at plus 145. In the last NFL draft to not have a first round running back was in 2014. And in fact, since 1992, the only drafts without a first round running back taken were in 2013 and 2014. Literally every other draft has had a first round running back, even with guys that we know didn't deserve it. Most recently guys like Rashad Penny, Sonny Michelle, and even Clyde Edwards Hilaire. All you need is one team to decide, hey, I want Brees Hall, or hey, I want Kenneth Walker right now with this pick in the first round. The other running back prop I like is Kenneth Walker to be the first running back off the board. And I know Brees Hall is the RB1 in this class for mostly everybody, and he's a fantasy football favorite, but the NFL doesn't care about that. Walker is the better pure runner in this class. He's the best one overall in this class. He ran a faster 40 yard dash than Brees Hall, and he just had a monster season at Michigan State. So I would not at all be shocked if Kenneth Walker was picked over Brees Hall, and you can get that at plus 200 instead of the minus 250 line that Hall currently has. So those are some of my favorite prop bets for the 2022 NFL Draft. I hope y'all enjoyed my guest spot on the BetSperts YouTube channel, and leave a like down below if you'd like to see more of me or at least more of this type of content on this BetSperts channel. If you did enjoy me, you can head on over to Dynasty League Football's YouTube channel as well to find me more in my natural habitat. So make sure that you're subscribed to this BetSperts channel and the Dynasty League Football channel. Also, just drop a comment down below on what your favorite NFL draft prop bet is because I'm really super interested to see what you guys are finding and what you guys are betting on. So with that all being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch y'all later.